Does this ever feel like de 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 deja vu to you? <laughs> it does to me. I'm John Zadar. This is another day. It's Monday, October 9th, and you're watching another episode of On Top and Hot, where we like to discuss OTC and penny stocks that can make us money. I like to refer to those as hot OTC and penny stocks. I go out every day searching all the markets for stocks under five bucks that have potential to make us money. And then I share that DD with you free of charge. You can't go wrong with that. Now, I do my due diligence by going to the charts first. I don't pay any mind to the press releases or the filings until I find a chart that has heat. I've seen a lot of big hot news fall flat on its face because the chart wasn't receptive to trading. So I'm looking for a chart that has heat, looking for a breakout setup or a lot of volume coming in, something that makes that chart look like it's ready to take off. Then I'll take the time to go looking through the filings and the press releases, looking for a catalyst, looking for a match that's going to set that chart on fire. When I find one, voila, I've got myself a hot penny stock. I get about six, ten of these a day, then I narrow it down to three. Normally, I narrow it down to the charts I think are the hottest. That's all my opinion. Well, this first stock we're taking a look at, she does have a hot chart. She was scraping across the new 52-week low, and she started to bounce up off of it looking good, and then she took off. Today, she had almost a 300% gain, and she fell back to only 15%. Now, I know, oh, it's been updated here. It did just say 53. She fell back to 15%, but I'm not worried about that because this company is not only on the radar of investors, but it's on the radar of people in Israel. This company's in Israel. They deal with high-tech electronics for the military. You see where I'm going with this? Because of current events, the war between Israel and Gaza right now that just erupted, and we have no idea how long this is going to go on, this company's services are now in demand, and they are getting more business right now, and the charts are taking some big leaps, and I don't think the leaps are done. So Giga, she finished today at 23 cents with just a little over 15% gains. She is on the middle tier of the OTC, the QB. That means she is getting her financials audited. That's good. Those are validated numbers. Speaking of validation, we've got a verified profile and a verified transfer agent. Those two green ticks are validated information being verified behind the scenes. So we like to see those on any stock. We've also got a independent directors listed here. The only reason I know you need to list independent directors here is when you have plans of uplisting. Now, I haven't gone through all their filings. I haven't read anything. But as I said, I don't know of any other reason to list them here. And there they sit. Then we've got a bonus with this stock. It's penny stock exempt. This should eliminate the risk of them being a startup company in your view. The reason that is, is because penny stock exempt means they've been in business for three to five years. They've had millions of dollars of revenue or assets during that entire time period, and they've kept up with their financials. In other words, they're doing what they're supposed to. They're working, they're making money, they're filing their financials, they're proving themselves to be responsible, and that's what you want in a company. So everything looks good over there. So. Let's get a little more information about Gigatronics here. For over 40 years in business, Gigatronics has been helping solve the world's next generation radar and electronic warfare problems with state-of-the-art high-speed signal generators, subsystem and sub-assembly test and measurement equipment. Gigatronics product lines include the advanced signal generation and analysis test equipment and the microsource subsystem and the subassembly TBRF technology. Now we get a little more information over here. The company works through the operating companies in the United States, the United Kingdom, and Israel to deliver purpose-built electronic technology solutions that save, protect, and enhance life. The company focuses on providing turnkey electronic solutions for defense, test and training applications, power electronics and displays, and radio frequency, microwave, and millimeter wave systems and components. The company primarily supports the defense and aerospace industries as well as mission-critical applications in medical technology, 
transportation, telecommunications, and industrial market sectors as well. So they do a lot more than just a defense sector, but that's the one getting all the attention right now. So what was the relative volume around the company today? Well, that's a lot more than she's normally getting, but I'll bet she gets a lot more than that. These numbers are small. She's normally doing about 13,000 shares a day before the war started. Now, today, she did 107,000. I still think that's a real low number. I would expect this to jump. Share structure for Giga. Oh my, look at this. Outstanding share count is only 6 million. A low float is anything under 10 million. Well, you can't have a float higher than an outstanding share count, so we absolutely know for sure that we have a low float here, somewhere below six million. Now, they do tell us here, and that's not too old, that's September 1st. They say at that time, the float was 2.2 million. Maybe it still is. <laughs> that would be an excellent float. Anything under six million is an excellent float, but the smaller, the better. 2.2 could be our float. Financials for the company, at the end of 2022, they did just a little over $30 million, got to keep about eight and a half million of that. Now, I know that's millions because they tell me up here, I got to add three zeros to any of the numbers on any of these charts. Jumping over to those quarterly reports, talk about regular revenues. Look at the last three quarters, 8.7 million, each one of them. What are they doing? Selling defense through subscriptions? <laughs> Balance sheet. All right, cash in the bank. We have $1.7 million. Total assets is at $37 million. Total liabilities, $30 million. So they are up on their assets over liabilities and their revenues are steady and strong. However, we're really not looking at them because of their revenues. We're looking at them because their services are in high demand right now because of the current situation going on in Israel. Looking at our disclosures. We've got an 8K A here. That A at the end means it's been amended. There was something wrong with the 8K back here and they had to fix it. This 8K has to do with the financials just like that 10Q does. So if you're really interested in the company, don't waste your time running around Google going from site to site. Just jump into one form, the 10Q or the 10K or even that 8K. There's lots of information in there. So let's take a look at that news now. So we have gone back here to July of this year. We've got two pieces of news that they're talking about their earnings. They are growing. Back in July, they said their bookings for the second quarter of 2023 exceeded 10.2 million. Then we jump up here to their third quarter, orders increased to 15.4 million. So they've jumped by 5 million and that was before trouble. Then we had news come out today. The company's subsidiary Entertech Systems wins $20 million contract. Now, I want to take a look at both of these pieces of news because they've got information in each that we need to be aware of. This one with their third quarter business reports. The company announced that its global business exceeded $15.4 million in bookings for the quarter ended September 30th of this year, a 52% increase in performance compared to the prior quarter. The company realized increased orders for its purpose-built electronic solutions with a continued emphasis on missile defense and integrated radio frequency electronic solutions. New bookings included electronic warfare testing, missile launch, and improvised explosive devices, countermeasure solutions for global defense contractors in addition to medical device test solutions for Fortune 50 global health care providers. Geopolitical military tensions continue to drive increased demand for the company's defense offerings and are expected to continue throughout the rest of 2023. I think the war will last at least that long, right? The company ended the quarter September 30th with a backlog, work they still got to finish and get paid for, of $33.7 million, a 21% increase over June 30th. And that other piece of news. The company announced its subsidiary, Entertech Systems 2001, has been chosen to supply bespoke systems to a major strategic customer under contract with a total value of $20 million. Entertech is located in Israel. 
In the first phase of the contract, Entertech received $5 million advance order to acquire materials and $1.5 million order for the immediate delivery of these systems. Entertech expects to receive subsequent orders for the remainder of the contract before the end of 2023. Performance of these orders will span a three-year period from 2024 to 2026. We expect to receive additional large orders to deliver similar bespoke solutions for this customer over the next three years. <laughs> I'm kind of reading between the lines there. It sounds like this war could go on for a while, but then these wars have been going on for like 2,000 years, if not longer. So this is why we're looking at the company. They have a product that they need over there right now. And as long as that situation is brewing, this company stock is probably going to be brewing. Let's go take a look at that chart. We are taking a look at Giga, or is that Gidja? You know, Gidja is a word. Did you Gidja? They say that down south. Did you get your truck today? Did you get your check? Did you Gidja? <laughs> But we're looking at Giga, as in Gigatronics, ticker G-I-G-A. And we're going to chart this stock and all the other stocks on my free trading platform, Think or Swim. I got this when I signed up with TD Ameritrade, and that didn't cost me anything either. So we are looking at Gigatronics, ticker G-I-G-A. This is a one-day, one-year chart. We have got a high back in November of $2.39, the only time she hit that 200 over this year. And from that point, she has been in a downtrend. And she came all the way down to this 52-week low, which she hit September 25th of 8.5 cents. And off of that, you can see she is starting to climb. Lots of volume coming in. Looking at our one-day, one-year oscillators, they are all pushing up. We got strength all the way back there. Coming down to our six-month, four-hour view. On the six-month chart, our high is $1.29. She's underneath the 50 and right here. This is when things change. She, she quit her downtrend and she started accumulating. She started having people buy shares at a price they all agreed upon. Right here, she's going sideways, consolidation. 50-day SMA got close and look at her run away from it. No, I don't want anything to do with it. And then all of a sudden she jumped. She jumped here, folks, from, oh, goodness gracious, we're looking at eight, eight and a half cents all the way up to this high up here of 72 cents. You're looking at over 800% run on this rejection. She came down like a cat getting ready to pounce and jumped way up here. Came back down, but this time has a better position. She's on top of her 50-day. Took another bounce. This was like a 100% gain. Not as big as this one, but we'll take it. Then she lost her footing here. Came all the way down. Skidded across the 200-day haul. Most of you don't know what this is. Most people don't have it on their charts. The 200-day haul is a lot like your 200-day SMA. It takes 200 days of prices, averages them all together, but the 200-day haul puts more credence on current prices. So you end up with a line that's closer to the price. Now, as I said, most people don't use it. And here recently, a lot of stocks have been paying heed to it. And you can see this one was definitely skidding across the top of it. Tapped a low here, came back up, started pushing up. And look at all the volume that's come in these last two days. She pushed herself way up here to 42 cents from 18 cents. That is over 100% gains. Fell back and she is over the 200 right now at 23 cents. Our oscillators. We have a crossover on our PPO. PPO is percentage price oscillator. That is a lot like your MACD. You read them the same. The difference, the MACD uses the whole price and the percentage price oscillator, yes, it uses a percentage of the price. So this has got a crossover right now looking strong. Our MACD is crossing the signal line and look at all those green bars accumulated and each one is getting bigger and bigger. And our RSI has been climbing for a long time. She was in the basement down here, under 30, has been pushing her way up, jiggling and joggling. She got herself all the way up here to 63 and has pulled back to 58. But things are looking good. She is closing in on that 200 right now. Coming down to our 20-day, one-hour view. So she's under the 50 here, hitting that low of 8.5 cents. 
going sideways with just a little bit of incline, creeping across that 20, getting a little excited. You see the size of our bars getting bigger. Once she got over top of that 50, she decided that's where she wanted to go. I love that, that little dojo right there. Uh, wick on both sides with just a line in the middle. And then she took off, folks. Big bounce first thing in the morning. She came back down and she's landed on her nine-day SMA. Oscillators, they're a little cool right now, but there's a lot of strength. They are still way up there, except for our RSI. RSI is taking a tumble, and that's down to 53. And personally, I don't like to see it under 55. Looking at our five-day, five-minute chart, I don't know what that's about. Tick, tick, tick. As a matter of fact, I want to show you something here, folks. There isn't a lot of volume here. There's not a, a lot of liquidity. And for that, I use a special bar. I use the Heiken Ashi. Let me show you what a normal candlestick looks like on this chart. That's what you get with normal candlesticks. One move, and you can't tell really what's going on here. It's tough to see. So when you turn on the Heiken Ashi, not only does it fill in the gaps for you so you can see where it's moved from, but it tells you how fast it's moving, how far it's moving. That looks a lot better, doesn't it? So on our five minute chart, we got our low back here of 12 cents, hit a high of 44 cents. You're looking at 350% gains there in about four days. Came down to our, our nine day SMA and at the end of the day, she started to lose her footing on everything. Came under the nine, came under the 20. Looks like she's heading to our brand new SMA. Now, I've got a sneaky suspicion that every time a new SMA comes on the board, the price wants to go to it. Doesn't matter if the new SMA is above the price or below the price. When it gets on the board, in a lot of cases, the price goes to that line. Sometimes it stays there. Sometimes it just hits it and goes back to whatever it was it was doing. That's what this looks like. So I would be hoping for a bounce off of this. In either case, folks, we know what's going on in Israel and it probably isn't going to stop anytime soon here. And this company being in Israel makes them very easy to deal with. So I would put G-I-G-A on your watch list for a while. I'm hoping you got a chance to catch my video I put out yesterday on AI companies. I think the AI sector is going to explode, folks. I think it's going to be the biggest growth we have ever seen in the market. And I covered three hot AI companies in that video. Well, I got another one for you now. This is Pluralock, ticker PLCKF. Now, I did cover this before, back in February. And the day we covered it is the day she hit her 52-week high. And ever since then, she has been falling. And right now, she is taking a turnaround. Her trend is changing. She's got a lot of strength. But the chart isn't perfect. But what is really looking good is the news. They have had lots of news here about big deals they're making with the government, with states, with municipalities. And it's looking hot because this company deals with AI cybersecurity. And right now, everybody is worried about being hacked by AI. And that's why this is so relevant. PLCKF finished the day at about seven and a half cents with almost 13% gains. She too is on the middle tier of the OTC, the QB. So she's getting her financials audited and she's got every tick we could hope for over here. She's looking outstanding. So what is PureLock about? Well, they tell us here that PureLock is an innovative identity-centric cybersecurity company that reduces or eliminates the need for passwords, extra authentication steps, like having to go to your phone just to sign into your computer. PureLock software leverages state-of-the-art behavioral, biometric, environmental, and contextual technologies to provide invisible, adaptive, and risk-based authentication solutions with the lowest possible cost and complexity, and they're doing this all with AI. So what was the relative volume around the company today? What? With all the news that they've got right now, I am... I'm more than shocked here. I was expecting millions, honestly. She jumped more than 50%, going from 18,000 shares up to 28,000 shares today. Jeez. Share structure for PLCKF. Outstanding shares, 101 million. 
And they do give us a float here, which isn't too far back. That is July of this year. <laughs> they say it's 97 million. So we virtually have all the outstanding shares. Now there's a possibility it could be lower, but I wouldn't hold my breath on that. Disclosures for the company. No, not disclosures. We want them financials because they're good. Look what's happened here. Through COVID, they weren't doing anything. $376,000 in 2020. In 2021, they exploded, folks, jumping to almost $29 million. And then in 2022, she took another huge leap, going to $47 million. And they are in profit. Taking a look at the quarterlies, well, they're kind of everywhere, but everything's in the black. That is to say, they're all in profit. And her last quarter, she did $9.2 million. So they're doing okay. I mean, they're not constantly growing, but things look good. Take a look at that balance sheet. All right, money in the bank. They've got $2.4 million. Total assets, $14.5 million. Total liabilities, just about the same, $14 million. So they're about even on their liabilities and assets, but their revenues are steady and growing. Let's see what we have for filings. Nothing. Nothing here at all, so let's just jump into that news. Right, we got lots of news here, folks, and I didn't know where to draw the line because the company's been doing business ever since we looked at it. But they were doing business with companies, corporations, apartments. They were doing smaller customers, if you will. Now they're doing huge customers. So I'm going to start at the top and read these headlines, and we're not going in into any of these because the headlines basically tells you. But most of these orders that you're looking at at the top are for three to five years with extension renewals possible. PureLock receives $5.1 million sale order from the U.S. Department of Treasury. PureLock receives a $4.2 million sale order from the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services. The company announces a contract with the state of South Carolina to expand distribution statewide. PureLock signs first cross-sale order for PromptGuard with U.S. financial service firm. PureLock signs another $2.2 million contract with the U.S. Department of Defense. The company signs a $400,000 contract for cybersecurity solutions project with California State Critical Infrastructure Agency. And PureLock announces generative AI safety white paper establishing guardrails for AI. Now this I find very important. I haven't found a whole lot more news here, but basically this is keeping your AI contained. You want it to do what you want it to do and nothing more. There are things we have to protect ourselves from, from AI. And we don't really know if we can do this, but we got to get ahead of the game. So they have already started something they call establishing guardrails for AI. That would probably be a real good one to read, just for knowing. So there you go, folks. You can see they are dealing with very important departments now. The Treasury, Human Services, Financial Services, California, Department of Defense, and there's lots more of them. And that is just here in the United States. Are they going to sell their product abroad? I really don't know, but I see a lot going on. You do see the dates here, right? This is October, October, September, September, August, August. So these are just in the last few months. These deals have just been solidified. The money is now coming in. So if you thought they were growing in revenues now, wait to the next quarterly report. Let's go take a look at this chart. Let's take a look at ticker PLCKF. This is a one day, one year chart. We've got a 52 week high here of 17 cents. This is when we looked at it last in February and a 52 week low of 5.8 cents, which she hit on the last day of September. And off of that low bubble, she is bouncing and turning around right now. And you can see our oscillators are all trying to recover right now. Our RSI is climbing, our MACD has had a crossover and our PPO is pushing up. Looking at our six month, four hour view. 
So we've still got that high here of 17 cents. You can see she's been running on this downtrend virtually underneath everything. And right now she's pushed herself up on top of the 20. That's as far as she has gotten, but this is a start. You can see the volume has been growing over the last few days. Our price right now is at seven and a half cents, just up underneath our 200 haul, but on top of the 20. Our oscillators, our PPO is again trying to cross that pink line. MACD is already at its crossover. Green bars are accumulating. RSI is climbing from the basement. Goodness, that was all the way down to 24. Right now, we are up to 53. And look at this perfect picture here. Doesn't this look like a mirror image right here? You got that blue line coming down. You got the red line coming up. What's happening up here? We go straight up from when this started to fall and this started to climb. This is falling right and as long as this is falling this line continues to fall and this line continues to go up now as soon as it leveled off everything leveled off here now what's happening the bottle is opening up right fish mouth well what's happening our price is climbing that's a pattern folks when this blue line and red line are coming together the price is falling when they start going apart your price is climbing so this is a perfect setup. Everything is looking good here. All of the technicals are strong. Coming down to our 20 day, one hour view. Downhill trend. She is here at just over eight cents underneath everything, trying to get over the 20 with no luck. Hit that low bubble, bounced off of it, got on top of the nine, on top of the 20, and is right up underneath that 50 and we do not have a 200. So that is our last goal to conquer right now. And look at our oscillators, they look just as good, right? RSI is pushing up and climbing, up there at 59 now. MACD is getting closer to signal line, still all green bars, still growing. And our pattern, right there, the blue and the red line are still going apart. Everything looks gorgeous here. And I expect that five minute chart to look wonderful. Not a lot of bars, not a lot of trading going on, but it's exactly what we want to see. A low in this corner, just about six cents. High in this corner of seven and a half cents. And she is stuck right there. Bing, bing. She just went straight across. Oscillators. Now our PPO has gotten closer, just getting ready to cross that pink line. Uh, we still have a fall on our ADX. MACD is climbing and our RSI has finally gotten calm, but it isn't falling. It's just going straight along. I like PLCKF for a run right now. I think putting her on your watch list for tomorrow, this week is a good idea. And I think putting her on your watch list for an AI company to keep your eye on is a definite must. Absolutely. Cybersecurity is going to be huge. You got to have AI to protect from AI hacks. We don't have anything smarter except quantum computers, and we're not going to get into that right now. So PLCKF, it belongs on your watch list. Wouldn't you agree? Our next top penny stock comes from the major exchange, the NASDAQ where you don't have to pay for any of your transactions and you get to trade the stock pre-market, after-market. You can't do that with the OTC stocks. We're now taking a look at Sonom Technologies, ticker SONM. Now her chart at the beginning of the year was really nice. She had grown about 300% and she started to cool off a little bit. Then she came out with some really good financials, August 14th, and the stock plummeted. It dropped 40%. And since then, it's basically been going sideways, waiting for that 200-day SMA to get close. Well, it got close, and she's breaking out right now. And she's had some good news here recently about how business is starting to take off. So Sonam finished today at 79 cents with almost 13% gains. So what is Sonam all about? Well, I thought she was a biotech. She's into 5G. She's into the internet and phones. Sonom Technology is a leading U.S. provider of ultra-rugged and consumer durable mobile devices, including phones, wireless internet data devices, tablets, and accessories designed to provide extra protection for users that demand more durability in their work and everyday lives. We currently sell our ruggedized 
10 XP 5G phones to several of the largest wireless carriers in the United States, including AT&T, T-Mobile, and Verizon. We also supply three of the largest wireless carriers, Canada Bell, Rogers, and TELUS Mobility. Our ruggedized phones and accessories are also sold to distributors in North America and Europe. Sonom devices and accessories connect users with voice, data, workflow, and lifestyle applications that enhance the user's experience while providing an extra level of protection. Now to give you an idea about their phones, I've jumped on over here to their website, sonomtech.com. Now these are rugged phones. These are meant to take a beating, take the cold, take the heat. I mean, literally, you could hit these with a hammer and they would not break. This is their standard smartphone, the XP10 5G. Does everything mine of your phones do, but ours can't take a hammer hit. Theirs can. Then they've got this other phone, very unique. This is Push to Talk. This is using radio frequencies, kind of like CBs and walkie-talkies do, but it's a phone too. So you can use it to call anybody you want, but you can also use it for free using the radio frequencies just by pushing a button and talking to your network of people. And finally, for the Star Trek fans, we have the flip phone. They still make it. Hey, uh, Scotty, beam me up. There's no intelligent life down here. Now, I've gone through all of this to get some information about the 5G aspect, but there is nothing here. We get all that information from the news. So, what was the relative volume around the company today? Not a lot of volume on the market, but I'm still expecting more volume than this. She did about a 100% increase today, jumping from 104,000 shares to 206,000 shares. Not really anything to get excited about, but it is an increase. She did double today. Share structure for Sonom. All they give us is the outstanding share count, 41 million. Our float can be anywhere up to that or below that. Market cap, about 29 million. Taking a look at the financials for Sonom. Well, back in 2019, she had a grand year, $116 million. Fell to 63, then down to 54, and now we are rebounding, and we are close to 70 million at the end of 2022, and we're taking home profit, 11 and a half million dollars. Quarterly, how are we doing there? Great. Every single quarter is larger than the quarter before it. Steady growth. Taking a look at those disclosures, we've got some form fours here. You remember what Form 4s are, right? These are filed whenever the insiders acquire or dispose of shares. And we really like it when they buy or sell them. That's what we're looking for. Well, here they acquired a whole bunch of shares, but they didn't pay for a single one of them. They were almost a gift. Their anniversary, one year for something, and they get a bunch of shares for their one year anniversary. So no purchases here, nothing we really need to take regard with. So let's take a look at that news then. Got lots of news here. Now, I have gone all the way back just to July. You see how much news we have here. Back in July, Sonom Technology launches their XP10 smartphone with Verizon. Then in August, Sonom reports 125% revenue increase to $26.8 million. Continued profitability in second quarter. You see the date right there? This is the news that came out that caused the stock to drop 40%. Now, I'll be honest, I have not jumped into this because I just saw that on the chart before I started talking to you. So that would be interesting because with 125% increase, the last thing you would expect is the stock to drop. There has got to be a reason there. We got another piece of news in August. The company's XP10 5G smartphone now available for T-Mobile business customers. Then in September, Sonom Gears, new customer agreement propels launch of premium tier mobile hotspot. Now, this is when they start talking about 5G. They are creating 5G hotspots. So if you can't get 5G at your house because of the provider, maybe you can just go down to the local McDonald's or whatever, you know, and get free 5G there. I don't know of a whole lot of free, I don't know of any free 5G spots, to be honest. Um, let me see. I do believe I wanted to talk to you about that one, 
Yes. All right. Sonom continues growth trajectory in 2024. New customer agreements ignite the launch of additional products from new wireless internet portfolio. Three more leading North American carriers opt for Sonom mobile hotspots. Total commitments for Sonom Connect wireless internet portfolio reach six for 2024. They told us only three when we were reading their description, signifying robust demand for value-centric solutions. Today, the company reported the latest advancements in its Momentum series. A total of six customers have now chosen Sonom's wireless internet devices for their 2024 lineup. This news builds on previous announcements that three customers had already committed to Sonom's new range of mobile hotspots and modems. This recent commitment from three additional North American Tier 1 carriers to value-centric motto is a significant endorsement of Sonom's growing portfolio of connected devices. The new value tier 5G mobile hotspot is perfect for business and consumers who require reliable, on-the-go connectivity yet demand affordability. This device supports global 5G connectivity, boasts cutting-edge design features such as SRS antenna switching to help optimize performance and a powerful rechargeable battery to ensure you keep going through a full workday. You can use the battery as a power bank, and with quick charge, you can top it off in no time. Furthermore, it incorporates Wi-Fi 6E, I think they're up to 7E now, technology and Qualcomm Snapdragon 5G X62 modem RF system. This is new, folks. 5G is hot, but we're not getting it out there as fast as we were thinking we're going to. We were supposed to have this already. I mean, I think three or four years ago, we were supposed to have the country covered in it. It just never got there. So at least hot spots would be nice. So they've jumped. They're moving with tier one internet service providers. You are talking the biggest. That's what tier one is. The biggest providers and they've now got six of them. I don't know how many there are. So this is something to keep your eye on. And since the chart is ready to break out, now might be a good time to put your eye on it. Let's go take a look at that chart. Let's take a look at Sonom, ticker S-O-N-M. We got a six month, four hour chart here. Our low of 40 cents, that hit in March. She went up 300%, hitting a high of $1.38. Radically went sideways, got near the 200 and lost her footing just like that. Started falling and then came out her financials on August 14th and she crashed all the way down here to 53 cents from 98 cents. We had a wimpy recovery here. It was a nice run, but she wasn't going anywhere. That 50 is way too steep to stand on, and the 200 is way too far away. So it came back down lower than where she started from, so I knew this wasn't going to be a breakout. She got over that 200, and she's been going sideways until the 200 got close, and now she's starting to break out. Now, I always like to take these huge rips and dips and put my Fibonacci on them. You start at the top, tag it there, come down to the bottom of it, tag it there. Now, what am I looking for specifically? The middle. I'm looking for the 50% mark. That's what they call it, 50%. It is right there. When you are under the 50% mark of a dip or a rip, you are in the negative zone. You are probably most likely going to fall. You need to get above that 50 to get some strength. And then it's more probable that you're going to climb. She is just now, just now breaking that 50% mark. It has taken her a very long time to get up there. Once she gets up on top, she should move a lot quicker. Now I'm going to take our Fibonacci down. Now I want to say this before I take it down. You see all these lines here? Those are supports and resistances. Throw up a Fibonacci on this big dip, and over here right now, we can trade using these. They will be close enough to actually use. Now, I'm going to pull the Fibonacci down, but I am going to keep up the uh, center line right there. That is a strong support resistance. Obviously, we've got one up here too. That is where she fell from. And up here at the top of this bad boy, there's going to be one there as well. So you can see, she has bounced off of her 50. Once she got up on that 50, she was working it. She got close to the 200 and she has bounced off of her 20 
up over top of the 200, broke one of those resistance lines, and she has pulled back. And right now she is dead center of this one. Perfect placement, right? That's what you want, the center. If you're below, that's the negative. You want to be center or above. So that's a good place to sit. All of our SMAs are approaching the 200. Every single one of those will be a golden cross as it crosses it, giving her turbo boost each time. Oscillators are looking good. We got a crossover on our PPO. MACD is pushing up hard, though we do have a little bit of cooling off. You can see our bright green is dull green now. And our RSI has pulled back. It was in the overbought. It has fallen back down to 62. But it doesn't look bad. Everything looks good right here. Looking at our 20-day, one-hour view. Wow. Look at this, folks. One, two, three. We're all coming down. And right here, these are all bass backwards. This is 200. This is 50. This is 20. This is 9. These should be the other way around. The smallest on the top, the biggest on the bottom. Well, right here, we had a switcheroo. Look at all of them get into place. Here's our 200. Here's our 50. Here's our 20. Here's our 9. Voila. Houdini came into the picture here and did some magic. And everything is beautiful. We are now on an uptrend. Our 200 is climbing. All of our SMAs are on top of the 200. She is testing it. She hit it once here. Many days go by before she tests it again. And now she's jumping and climbing. Breaking through this resistance at 76, hitting 79. She is pulling back right now. Can't say as I like the way she's set up. After market hours, she's pulling back fast. She's like at about 73. Oscillators were very hot until the aftermarket period, and those are cooling them off a lot. Coming down to that five day, five minute. Low bubble here of 62 cents. The 200 day SMA is falling down right in this area. She leveled off and now she is going up. Our volume was strong today, a little strong yesterday, but all the days before were weak. She is looking good except for the fact of those aftermarket bars right there. Everything is starting to pull back and it's a little scary because she could come down to that 200. Going back on the other charts, looking at the one hour, there's nothing close. There are no SMAs for it to bounce off of. This 20 is way down at 71 cents. And on the five minute chart, our 200 is down at 69. So both of them are in the same area. She could come down to that point. I'd watch for the bounce before I got into this, if you like it. S-O-N-M. She's got a lot of things going for her. That's why I've pointed her out. But I haven't shown you all the information, right? She fell for a reason on August 14th. I don't know what that reason is. Maybe it's important. And there's a lot more information for the other two stocks I did not cover. So please do me and you a favor. Do some more due diligence before you put your money into them. Remember, the more you know, the more you're going to grow. See you, folks.